Hey, down here. Well, this is back on the AS Rock, and this is Sardu multi boot setup. And I have it running on my AS Rock there, and uh, you can kind of see down there the um, it's a 30 gigabyte hard drive, just a regular uh, IDE hard drive came out of one of my machines on a USB adapter it'll also do SATA and it'll do uh, CD drives and stuff but uh, oh and I have it uh, plugged into the Molex 12 volt uh, supply from a Molex connector from computer power supply uh, this is my, um, probably can't hear me too good, that's my power supply amp, I call it. It's got two, uh, it's an old computer box with uh, two um, computer power supplies in it, and uh, they're wired to car audio amps, and so that's my amplifier from my home stereo system, where it's my main amp. I have using that, and uh, that's... Uh, and that uh, old uh, Awa jam box, so it's 50 watt, and those two um, amplifiers are 80 watts each. So I've got uh, like six speakers hooked up. So uh, and each one are kind of at a different range. So all together, they actually sound pretty fairly good. Only bad drawback of using the uh, power supply to power that hard drive at the same time, and that's why I kind of quit using it. Is it will uh, I don't hear it right now, but it'll especially when it starts running fast, it will uh, make a terrible buzz or a spinning. It you, it's, it can just it's a spinning noise of the platter in the hard drive. You know, it's a, it sounds like a spinning noise. You know, it's kind of a high pitched buzz. Not exa I wouldn't call it a buzz. I don't. I can't think think of the right word right now. But anyway, I had built this. I'd actually forgot what was on here, and I was getting thinking about reformatting it and using it as a hard drive to install an operating system a new operating system on the AS Rock instead of going on and trying to uh, you know uh, finish uh, well I think it's fairly clean the Windows 7 that was I'm sure it's broken I'm pretty sure because well I know the boots broken because it could, when you when it goes to try to boot to the hard drive it goes to the uh, uh, Windows 7 repair screen, boot repair screen, so that part's broken. There's probably other Windows files that are missing now from all the virus scans and files that were deleted. Some of those scanners don't tell you what they delete. So, uh, so I thought, well, let's see what I, I started looking. I stuck it, I plugged it into my uh, uh, regular machine, my Fedora 23 machine on the Lenovo i5, and uh, started looking around the directories. I'm like, oh, well, I've got Sardu in there, and that's all I got. I was thinking I might have had a backup from from my laptop in there, but I didn't see that. So I thought, let's see what I have in there. Actually, I kind of got an idea. So I said, well, <coughs> let's boot it up because I was having trouble getting. I knew I had something with Hiron's boot CD that would run. Let's see, what do I have in the antivirus? I'm pretty sure I've already used these. But uh, what what happened to me? Yeah, I've, you've been to MRT. I've used that. Well, that's a different one, though, isn't it? There's another one that's built on, but you've been to, but it's a name brand. Uh, I think it was Trend Micro. I think it never would run. Or did it? Yeah, it didn't work. It finally booted up. I had trouble getting it booted up, and then once I got it booted up, it wouldn't. It wasn't working right, and it wouldn't update the virus definitions. I'm getting to think some of those things that would boot up I finally after reading a lot on that easy to boot website that I, that's what I was using to build the, that multi boot on my uh, 32 gigabyte SD card and the USB adapter I uh, <coughs> I'll go ahead and kind of go through these uh, I'm finally realizing that it's real picky about I mean you have to rename the ISOs to different certain names to get them to work sometimes all kinds of really odd things to me I'm not used to any of that I've been using Sardu and Yummy and Xboot and uh, uh, Unit Booting for years and uh, never had any of that any of this business about having to rename ISOs and stuff it's kind of a convoluted way to 
make things work it, it evidently it does work uh, it was kind of actually I already renamed the Hirons ISO and put it on there but I didn't try it yet renamed it to what they suggested sometimes they tell you well we'll probably work but you've got to figure out how to what to rename it to and all this stuff and it seems I don't know why renaming it, it even helps and I can't imagine how that system set up that that even helps but uh, um, anyway that's how it's set up and uh, so in my utilities I got parted magic rescue tux boot repair 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 disc 64 and 32 those are that's good they, they work really well um, then I got higher boot CD oh and now this is the one I remember now I thought that was on a USB stick it was on here if I boot to grub it doesn't work I don't think it'll boot at all if I do ISO Linux it works I remember that on this one anyway I might go ahead and boot in there. Uh oh, what did I do? I must have hit. Must have hit the wrong thing. I was trying to go back to the main menu. Tap. There we go. But it does control all delete just fine, so it should work again. I have to have it right here next to my face to get the whole screen. So try not to yell at the phone. And then when I move it away, of course, the mic's not really all that powerful, and so. My voice is probably going, you know, loud and soft uh, in this video. Okay, there we go. Now, what was I in? I was in utilities. Okay, yeah, Partic Magic. Yeah, I try. I used this quite a bit for a while, and I just got to where I couldn't stand listening. I mean, when you do a virus scan, it's running for, like this machine, run three and a half, four hours. Couldn't stand that uh, high pitch noise. And I couldn't turn my speakers off. I couldn't watch a video or do anything. So, uh, <coughs> you would think uh, that you wouldn't have that problem with these computer power supplies, but, uh, and that, well, they're old ones that uh, may not be in that great a shape anyway, so they may not be. And I had uh, ground lifted one of them and, so that I could get 24 volts. I hooked them up in the series so I could get 24 volts and get the ground. I, fun, I did a bunch of reading because uh, I wanted my power supply to give me anything from 3 volts to 24 volts because I wanted to be able to power laptops but I never could get it to work on a laptop anyway so and actually the one that was ground lifted it buzzed all the time. I left it that way for about a year because I just didn't feel like getting back to messing with it and it's pretty complicated I couldn't really think straight to do it uh, to you know rewire it without going back into all the research I'd done. So finally one day I did it, and I was really glad I did. Uh, and it makes them real vulnerable too. I actually blew out. I actually uh, using my voltmeter. I blew out one. I, I blew out two power supplies building that thing, just testing and stuff. You know. Uh, one time I remember I did it with a voltmeter because it has really long. It's an old realistic voltmeter from the 70s. It has real long leads on it. I accidentally crossed something. Uh, I think I actually let it touch the case or something, and blew one out. And another one I blew it out some other way. And I was like, well, "Heck, I'm running out of power supplies." So uh, my hands are kind of not—they don't work as well as they used to. I, I'm kind of kind of drop things, and my hands jerk sometimes and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm not used to that. When I, I used to have really good—I used to be really good at working with my hands. So anyway. Uh, what have I got in here? Uh, Fedora Security 64, boot core, Netboot CD Core. Plus. Oh, that's someone. I actually used that. I don't know if it's on here, but I used it to. I might use my USB stick. That'll boot, uh, and you can uh, download and install Linux distros from the serv that server, and uh, or it may just connect you back to. Like I remember, I installed uh, Debane 8 or 7.5 or whatever on uh, one of my laptops. Fedora Mac Compass. I don't know which version that is. It's probably 23. Design Suite, I know it's 23. Yeah, because I don't think 24 was out when I did this. I did this, I guess it might have been last year when I actually did it. So, okay, now I wasn't, I was talking and not thinking. Let's go into, I was thinking about going into Hirons, but. Uh, part of magic boot repair Hirons. Just go into Hirons right quick just for grins. Um, 
Okay, now there's the full menu. <clears throat> I believe it'll boot up just fine. What I had hoped was maybe I could run some of these uh, on, uh, online virus scanners. You'd run, you know, run the executable in Hirens, but didn't I get into Hirens and try that? I kind of expect that they may not work because you know they pro may depend on .NET framework or some DIL files that's not in Hirens because it's a live version of XP. I, I run you run into that a lot when you try to run uh, applications from straight uh, .exe files instead of the way they have it set up. He has it all set up to make it work with most. Actually, there's some things on here uh, that they put on here that when you start them up, they'll say. Uh, this may run, but it won't work quite right. You ought to just go ahead and run it from a Windows system and go into safe mode and do it that way. You know, like uh, malware bytes, I always remember that one. Sometimes I don't remember and I try to run it. But lately I did that and so I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. But uh, it, with the, some of the apps, though, that they have on there, even if they don't work well uh, or fully functional or whatever, at least it introduced me to them and they're really good apps. So. <laughs> It's a good resource on several unexpected ways. Even though it's old, it's still useful. Uh, but the, there's several virus scanners on here, but they don't. Uh, they're too old. I wouldn't really use them because because it's. Uh, let's see, this is Hirens 15.2, I believe. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I wasn't looking just now, but I don't know if it said that on there. But uh, it takes a lot more longer to load on uh, from this hard drive than it does from that SD card. I know USB uh, sticks are a lot faster at reading and loading uh, than uh, using the hard drive on a USB adapter, and so uh, so is that SD card in the USB adapter. Actually, I think it's even faster than my old, my old USB sticks. It sure seemed fast because this Windows this Mini XP. I remember loading it. It loaded up fast. Well, but, oh yeah, it loaded up fast, but then all the menus weren't there. So maybe it was faster. Be partially because it wasn't loading everything <coughs> so we'll see but if I fire I'm pretty sure this works I'd have to go stick my uh, my those executables I'm talking about are in that SD adapter of course I could plug it in and, and it would probably find it we'll see it's starting to make a little noise it's funny when it decides to do it yeah, there's the Hirons menu right there. That's the one I was looking for before. <coughs> I think since I've gone this far, yeah, and all the other things, wireless setup. <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> okay, here's my, um, sorry, <coughs> SD card. Let's just go. Get, gotta get into my left hand. Put it in here, right, next, right above the. Uh, I'll just go ahead and give it a try, one or two of them, since I've already booted up into Hirons. Give me a little drink first. <coughs> First, I want to make sure that I have network going up here, just network set up, and it should work just fine, because you can't run those unless you have a network uh, to update the uh, definitions. Some of these executables may just be downloaders too, it was kind of hard to tell, you know, they don't really tell you what you're really getting sometimes, but, uh, and it'll do wireless, so you could use it on a laptop too, you know, but. Here's the Hirons menu, and it's got a lot of tools in there. And you can see the top one is antivirus. It's got ClamWin, which would probably be, well, see, even ClamAV, uh, that's what it's called, Clam. Well, ClamWin is for Windows, and ClamAV is for Linux. But ClamAV is, <coughs> like I have it on a Fedora 14 system, and it got to a certain point and couldn't update anymore. And there's several versions newer on my, you know, Fedora 23 system, so that would make di a difference in how well it's effective it is. 
uh, some of these others see there's some well-known brands in here there's the malware bots that won't really work and uh, so um, see like these root kits deals unless they update their definitions they would be useless I, don't, I haven't run them in a long time and so anyway but there's a lot of other tools in there I won't go through them now but uh, <coughs> I'm going to open up the Explorer. Let's see. 32 gigabyte SD. It's good to name, uh, give your own name to your SD cards and stuff so you know instantly what you're looking at. So, it's the one I've been working with. Uh, that's the easy E2B uh, icon. Ico. That's their icon. Easy to boot. And it is great when it works, but when it doesn't work, it really ended up being very frustrating. Uh, it's very, I mean, I'm really familiar with this multi-boot stuff, and, uh, I've been doing, I've been, uh, I didn't start learning multi-boot things right away, but in 2005 when I started, uh, discovered Linux, a friend told me about it, and, uh, been running it ever since every day as my main operating system, um, Fedora is my favorite, that's what I started with, and I guess it's, since that's what I learned on, it's part of what, like Devain is a good system. I ran it for two years uh, as my main system, uh, but it's it, it's it's some of its commands. I don't do a lot of command line stuff, but but just simple things like you know yum update uh, is real simple in Fedora, but it's in Devain it's app dash get update. I can't remember exactly. You have to type you know everything. And of course, in the commands they all have to be right. So anyway. Uh, Oh yeah, that's that little site where I downloaded my ISOs. <coughs> okay, so um, <coughs> when it's modified, don't matter. I just want to know what it is. Okay, so yeah, there's the easy to boot apps and stuff. Virus malware. Okay, so see, like there's one that 360 TS update. I'm uh, install. I have three versions, and I'm not sure. Don't now remember. A lot of times I'll I'll save the website page so that I'll know, but I didn't. There's a few in there. This information didn't save those. Let's go by type so that keep them in better order. Yeah. What is that? Oh, it's a PDF. Okay. F secure how to spybot any beacon. Those are actually to keep. Windows 7 and on up from spy Microsoft from spying on you. Rescue disk. That's to build a trend micro rescue disk. Made a fender client. Now that might be an online scanner. Enemy net. I don't think I put any regular just installers in here. That's why. But those are why I have three versions. So that's what makes me wonder. Mini setup. Oh, let's see. 1077, 1020. That looks newer. <coughs> I'm going to see what it is. What does not support Windows 2000, 2003, XP 64, installation cannot continue. Okay. Well, let's see what this one does then. Nope. Nope. Well, that one's missing the deal. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what happens a lot. Uh, I've already ran F Secure anyway, so I don't know if I ever ran any Immunet. I can't remember now. Made a Defender. I know I didn't run. So let's see what that does. Nothing. There it is. Error doing execution. So it's not. It'll say things like that. It is valid. Well, it could be a 64-bit app, but I, don't, I doubt it. Oh, Immunet. Now, that's just a downloader. Okay, so... But it may be the... Yeah, Immunet's the one that has the online virus scheme. Now, see that? Of course, I don't think it uses more than just their engine. What I would like is... Uh, I, I use a... Um, let's see, what's it called? I use a browser add-on that will scan your links and the file downloads by right-clicking on them. Actually, it's... Uh, now I've got it's got a feature to where you can turn it on to automatically scan links just when you click on them and I turned that on in my Fedora in my Firefox in Fedora 23 the other day 
so let's see what this is saying so anyway it'll scan with like 30 engines so that's pretty cool that's what you need to rescue a system but it won't it only does one file at a time you know we need something that can scan a whole system that would be neat percent be some heavy load on servers wouldn't it okay <coughs> extracting it to the temp directory a deal file XML file, Win32 platform. Well, I was pretty sure that's what this was. Uh, well, that's what this mini XP is. Failed. Okay, close. Ch connectivity. Let's make sure we're on the internet. Said it sounded like it failed on connectivity. Where's the. Uh, I'm just going to click on that. I think when you click on the Internet Explorer icon, it actu actually opens up Oprah. How about that? Okay, so yeah, it's online. So that's not the problem. Okay. Did I try Mater Defender yet? It's just not doing anything. It's probably... There it is. I think I already tried it, didn't I? Rescue Disk. That would build one, which I don't want to do. Okay, it's Bob out any beacon. So, those are just the files that come along with the HTML file. So, not a single one of these is going to run. And then, the ones to uh, eliminate and prevent ransomware, which would, doesn't have ransomware on it. Yeah, okay. So, that's it. That's everything that I was going to th thinking about trying to run. And I can go over here and look in the. I don't think there's anything in here. <coughs> I just about decided to reformat this hard drive that I'm on running this right now. And then I thought, oh, well, let's see. I've got any tool toner that I could use on this thing before I reformat it. But I think I'm going to put my uh, Windows 7 or, or, or Fedora 24 even on this 30 gigabyte hard drive. <coughs> and then I can use it to... I can delete all the unneeded Windows stuff off of that uh, bigger hard drive, and, and it'll be give me more room to back up my phone videos. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Um, I won't go on and on about how bad my allergies are again. I've been doing saying that every time I cough. <coughs> okay. Uh, Doctor Webb. Actually, I ran that on the Doctor Webb Risky Disk. It just uh, after I ended up letting that thing run for t probably 16 hours, and it never did finish. So something something not right about it. Or at least the way I had, the way I had it on, I think I put it on one, uh, that uh, SD card with uh, a SAR I think. Anyway, Vira I ran already. Clamwin and virus. That's that might be somewhat useful. Move fa oh yeah, the one the, the one of what I've got on here. The only thing the thing that might be the most useful is uh, that other you've been to MRT one it's it's an okay scanner I think so uh, and it's new so yeah there's nothing on here that I want to run right now I'll just kind of flip through the menus right quick just to let you see how many apps are on here and most of them run I would say 90% of them run and run right so if you're really a big Windows user and you want a bunch of rescue apps and hard drive partitioning apps and everything under the sun all on one CD then this Hiren's boot CD is pretty cool for that let's hit restart 
Let's try that again. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to stop for a minute. 